Einstein's theory of relativity helps to explain why what you're seeing in this Washington University laboratory is truly phenomenal. Einstein's relativity tells us nothing can propagate or travel faster than, the, than light. So the speed of light is the terminal speed for anything. That makes our camera extremely powerful because we can literally watch a single light pulse propagate in space. Uh, we can see how the light will turn angle uh, as it gets reflected or as it bends. Uh, when the light enters from a one medium into a different medium, uh, you can see the light will turn angle. Dr. Li Hong Wang and his team of biomedical engineers have developed the world's fastest 2D camera. It captures events up to 100 billion frames in one second. That's hands down the most powerful receive-only ultra-fast imaging technique in the world. So fast, it tracks light. This camera allows us to um, uh, get 100 billion frames per second. A, a typical video camera uh, targets 30 frames per second, right? Because our eye cannot tell any difference between adjacent frames. And we, we can see a smooth movie as soon as you reach that kind of frame rate. Uh, but a lot of fast phenomena, phenomena cannot be resolved using 30 hertz or 30 frames per second. You have to go a lot faster than that. So with the 100 billion frames per second, you can literally resolve light propagation. Again, that's the fastest phenomenon uh, in the world. Wang and his colleagues are able to capture the images using a technique developed in this lab called compressed ultrafast photography. We figure out a way. We use a technology called the street camera. But a standard streak camera doesn't really work. A streak camera measures the intensity variation in a pulse of light, but it's one-dimensional. Wang needed to make the camera two-dimensional. In order to resolve at an extremely high speed, a streak camera has to sacrifice the vertical resolution for spatial resolution. Um, so they, they remove the spatial resolution on the vertical axis and convert that into the temporal resolution. Um, so what we wanted to do was to convert a street camera into a, almost like a standard video camera uh, with two-dimensional spatial information plus the temporal information, but at a very high speed. In order to convert a standard street camera into our cup camera, what we call compressed ultra-fast photography, um, we have to use some modern technologies. A key technology is something called compressed sensing. Dr. Wang explains how compressed sensing is a signal processing technique developed for data processing. A signal is sampled and simultaneously compressed at a greatly reduced rate. There's our cup camera adds a new dimension to it. Cup sounds like a simple name for a camera, but there's nothing simple about this setup. It's not your Canon, Olympus, Sony, or Kodak. The Cup, compressed ultra-fast photography process, makes using any sophisticated camera in today's market a cakewalk. The laser beam is basically routed through a bunch of mirrors, then comes all the way to here. So this is the last lens where we uh, direct the laser beam. We can route a laser beam through this diffuser. And so this diffuser is, is going to scatter some light off the primary beam, but some light will be directed toward this objective. This is the lens that's going to capture light. Going through some of the beam splitters, right, it'll be routed toward this uh, DMD, what we call a digital micro mirror device. That's going to provide a mask to encode the light pattern. Then we route it toward this street camera. This is where we take the picture. This is treated as a black box for now, but there are a number of steps going on within the camera as well. The lab does not even record a full second. At 100 billion frames, the file size would be impossibly too large to handle. If we film at that frame rate, you know, if it lasts a second, we will be in trouble. So what we do is um, we don't, our frames don't last very long. So we have um, only about 350 frames per file. We work in picoseconds range. It's a one pulse and literally propagating in space, we just replay that, but with 10 billion times slowdown in order to visualize 
the propagation of light. Capturing a single laser pulse traveling in measurements of millimeters. Shortly after successfully tracking light, Dr. Wang submitted his research for publication. Once published in December of 2014, this lab received international attention. For Dr. Wang, making the cover of this prestigious scientific journal is one of many proud achievements and well-deserved. Dr. Wang says the awe-inspiring technology opens the door for never-before scientific exploration, enabling new discoveries. For example, Wang has hopes of coupling the technology with the Hubble telescope. This camera has a lot of applications. It can be made multi-scale, meaning you can couple this with a microscope, a standard um, lens, all the way to the Hubble telescope. So you're talking about the microscopic scale within a single cell, um, all the way to light years of objects, um, like supernovae. You know, um, they're faster phenomena that uh, no device can detect right now. From telescopes to microscopes, Dr. Wang says there are many possibilities. The direct payoff is we enable potentially new discoveries for biomedicine or all the way to astronomy. And eventually we want to make our contribution to, for example, curing some of the most challenging diseases like cancer. Of course, there has been a lot of media attention because people perceive this as a major breakthrough. You know, uh, people wanted to uh, work with us. So they want to apply you know, to the problems they've been trying to solve. And we are looking uh, for more applications as well in my own lab. Dr. Wang's work is far from over. Right now we have 100 billion frames, but it's not the ultimate limit. For Innovations, I'm Kathleen Berger.